Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. My name is Jerry. I am the sales manager and clarinet consultant in our Santa Fe, New Mexico shop. Um, lifelong clarinet player, professional for 20 years. I play mostly small combo stuff, jazz and other... I call myself a saloon musician. So, rock and blues and Latin and all kinds of things. Uh, general music specialist. And so I've been delighted to be a part of this, uh, part of Lisa's clarinet shop in New Mexico for the past year. We're going to talk today about Lisa's patented color ring system. We use these color rings to capture the characteristics of each clarinet, specifically the foundation of the sound, the shape of the sound, and the color of the sound. And we have multiple colored bands, rings, that signify whether it has brightness or darkness as a foundation whether it has smoothness or bigness for a shape and if it has a sweetness or a ring to it for color. Also, the rings help to marry an individual player to an instrument. So each instrument has its own characteristics and each player has its own characteristics. I am going to demonstrate this instrument. This is my personal clarinet and also my particular way of playing. This is a LeBlanc Opus 2. I'm going to play on it and I'll describe the color rings and then I'll also talk about what I bring to that coloring spectrum for this one. <laughs> This instrument would have a coloring uh, foundation color of brown. So brown is darkness, a dark foundation. It also would have red. Red brings in some lightness. In terms of the shape of sound, it would have a purple band. Purple is bigness. It can take a lot of air. And it also would have an orange ring, which uh, an orange coloring, which gives it ring, resonance. So by nature, I bring to it the brown and the purple. I have a lot of darkness in my sound and I bring a lot of energy, a lot of air, big sound. So this instrument complements my playing by filling in the red for lightness and the ring, the orange for ring, for resonance. I've been very, very happy with this instrument and in the course of getting to know it, I've gotten to know my own playing better. So I'm going to move on to an instrument that has fewer color rings. This is an R13 Prestige, and it has orange and red color rings. So red for the foundation is bright. It gives you highs, and the orange gives you a ring. So for me, again, I'm bringing darkness to it. This instrument doesn't by its nature have a lot of darkness, but maybe you'll hear that in the way that I play it. Beautiful instrument. I can feel the lightness in the foundation. I feel that it doesn't have that brown in it, that kind of darkness. Beautiful horn. For me personally, I would like something with a little bit more of a low end, but for other people, this would be perfect. A brown, uh, so red and orange colorings on an R13 Prestige. So this one, this is a festival, and it has red, orange, and brown. So this is an instrument that has one more coloring than the last one I tried. This is the brown. This is filling in that bottom range. So you can 
tell immediately it has the redness that that bright foundation it has the ring but this one fills in that bottom with the brown that's a festival this is an interesting case here because this is a tradition which by design has a dark character this one does not have the brown ring however this has a red and orange ring so again the brightness and the resonance and between my playing and the characteristics of the tradition we'll see if it has darkness built in I'm experiencing some of that darkness, but not in the same way as I would if it had a brown band, a brown ring. Beautiful instrument. I like the tradition. And it's interesting to me to be able to see how that darkness of the design factors into it without it having that dark ring ascribed to it. This next one introduces a new ring, introduces green. And now green speaks to the shape of the sound. Green is, it represents smoothness. And frequently you'll see that associated with darkness as well. Most of the time, if you have a green ring, you have a brown ring that goes along with it. This is a great opportunity for someone who is looking for focus in their sound. If you have a, a wide, kind of a broad sound and you want to get it refined, green is an excellent ring for that. This is an RC Prestige in A, A clarinet. <laughs> darkness of it and the the contained aspect of the green I like it I like that it's giving me parameters that I can push against so RC prestige with brown green and orange rings And a special case. I would hate to be too straightforward with it. <laughs> this is a Legende, and it has a red ring, an orange ring, which by now you know is about lightness and about resonance ring. Also has a green for smoothness and pink, which is sweetness, a smallness, a compactness, a compact brightness. This is unusual because most of the time, if you have a green, as I said, you'd have a brown. But this is an instrument that has a green ring with no brown ring on a Lejeune green line. instrument. I love the way that it's contained. 
I like the smallness of the pink and the parameters of the green with the lightness of the red and the resonance of the orange. And of course, in, and in general, I'm going to bring in brown colors. I'm going to bring in purple. So for me, this instrument has an interesting balance to it, balance when I play it. And we can go on from there. It's a fascinating, fascinating system. And we see it in action here in the shop very, very frequently. We'll have someone come in to play instruments. They'll start on their own instrument. And then by identifying that person's natural characteristics, we can match them up with a horn. And what's exciting for me to watch is Lisa will be working with the customer and say, here, try this instrument. You're going to hate it. And sure enough, the person will play it and they will not respond to it. They will not resonate with it because the characteristics of that instrument don't match the characteristics of the player. And this is what the coloring system makes available in real time without having to search through instruments and wonder, oh, you like this one. I don't remember why, but I think you like this one. But the festival sounded good, but the R13 was not quite as big, but the prestige was a little too bright. We can look at it and see the colors. You can see this person right here has a sound that is a little unfocused, a little spread. We need to bring in a little darkness. We need to bring in a little lightness and we need to focus it in. So let's find a red, a brown and a green that's going to serve this individual. Well, this person really loves the feel and the sound of a 70s or 80s R13. So we know we're going to be looking for red. We're going to be looking for orange, maybe looking for some pink to get them that sweetness, that lightness that they're looking for. And again, it all is depending upon a match between the instrument's characteristics and the player's characteristics. I will hand it over to my friend and colleague, Don Nathan, and he'll talk to you further about this process. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm, as Jerry said, Don Nathan is my name. I'm uh, in Columbus, Ohio. I am a former band director. About a year ago, I uh, retired from my career as a school band director, did that for 39 years. I'm also a clarinetist um, and have played most of my life uh, on and off. Um, and as a, as a clarinetist and a teacher, especially in, a, in the public school system, it was always rather intimidating when a student would ask me, you know, to help them find an instrument, um, going, trying lots of different instruments and finding what works best for them. It would have been so helpful uh, in those years if I had this knowledge and this system that sort of quantifies and specifies the different characteristics of sound. Uh, in the past year, I've, I've learned this system. Um, in fact, in the, the last uh, two days ago, three days ago, Lisa and I did a session with some of my former students uh, where we um, had them play their instrument and um, then tried to match instruments to their natural abilities um, or their natural tonal tendencies. And I was amazed at how much better they sounded when we got the right match. So let me demonstrate some things here, uh, much like Jerry did. I want to show you some instruments. This first one is a um, Buffet R13 from the 1970s, like Jerry was just talking about. It's got the brown uh, for the lows, the red for the highs, the orange for the resonance, and the pink for the sweetness. I'm just going to play, by the way, I'm playing on a, uh, a, a Pine Williamson replica mouthpiece with a uh, Van Doren three and a half blue box reed. <laughs> Okay, so all the way up, up through the instrument to here, um, the, uh, the entire range of the instrument there. So uh, the next one I want to show you is actually a Serio. 
These, uh, this first one is a uh, Claro. Now there are two models of these Sirios. The Claro has in the top uh, joint has a composite much like a buffet green line. Uh, the bottom joint is Grenadilla wood. And these have that sort of sweetness and uh, same characteristics of those old buffets. This one has a red and a brown band. <laughs> I should have mentioned before I started that my my um, natural tendency is to play very bright. Okay, so I'm always looking for something with a darker tendency. The next one I want to play has the same type of uh, or the same bands, the red and the brown. But this is in the Serio model. This is an oscuro, which is a darker sound, designed to be darker. Okay. Okay, whoop. So that's just the uh, the two, the dark and the and the uh, the lows and the highs, the brown and the red. On the next one, this is a uh, another uh, claro, but we're going to add the orange now for resonance to the red and the brown. Okay, so a little more resonance there. Then we're going to stick here with the um, Serio uh, Oscuro model. This one now has um, the same as that um, Claro had, the brown, red, and orange. Okay, so you may hear a little difference in there between the two models with the same uh, color bands. Now we're going to bring in um, a green and a purple. Green for smoothness, purple for bigness of sound, uh, along with the red and the brown on an oscuro. Oh, got the bands in the wrong place here. Let me get them opening that key. There we go. Okay, so we have the um, the purple there is to me what makes the big difference as far as how big that sound, how much I can put air through that and how big it is. Okay, and then the final one I have, and this is actually my instrument. Uh, we, it's like the one I just played, but we're removing the green band. This does not have those characteristics. It has the red and orange and brown and the purple band. And this is my, what, my choice uh, for being a bright player, what the, the sound that I like to be able to hear. Okay, I'm going to take these bands off because sometimes they open the key when they shouldn't. Here we go. Okay. So um, I really like the, the bigness of that sound, the darkness, but also with some highs and some resonance in it. Um, those are all of the examples we have there. Now, as Lisa has just mentioned, or someone just mentioned in the, uh, in the questions here, 
Well, Lisa mentioned earlier that we do have some supplemental vid videos. I would encourage you to go look at those. Those are, um, so, I believe some of those are with the students that we worked with uh, on Wednesday and the difference that it made. Um, and then we have a question, uh, looks like here from Lynn. Um, okay, about the dark and, and bright sounds and students being able to hear them side by side. And as Lisa said, those videos will be up on Sunday. Okay, so any other questions? All right. Well, um, I believe that's all I have. Jerry, anything else? Um, no, I think that we've covered it. Please do check out the supplemental videos. I have played the, all of these same instruments and recorded myself playing them and talking more about them in, in greater detail about each of the characteristics and how the color rings act upon them. Um, as I say, it's an interesting and subtle but simple and effective way to think about how to connect the player and the instrument. That's the connection. That's what it's about. It's about finding the instrument that's going to support a player's natural tendencies and fill in the blanks where, where a person's habits and, and, and personal characteristics don't give a full picture. So that's the idea. It's about creating that full picture of your sound to give you the foundation that you're looking for, the shape and the color. Please do be in touch with us. I would be happy to talk with you individually more about this and about our process, how we analyze the instruments, how we discover them. Another important aspect of this, and the videos talk about this, is that the coloring application can change over time. For example, if you have a new instrument, fresh out of the box, right from the factory, and you play it, you may get one, you, you may recognize certain colorings than if you were to do a repad and a full setup on that instrument, mm -hmm. the colorings can change. So you really want to make sure that the instrument is set up properly and equipped to its highest level so that you can understand what the rings are doing. You can sometimes get um, a cloudiness that you might mistake for darkness or mistake for smoothness, but when in actuality it's not completely set up yet. Yeah. So that it goes hand in hand with that and with um, having access to repair like Don. Don understands how to set these instruments up to get their maximum expression. And so from there, once they're set up properly, we can assign rings to it and make that technology stick. Yeah, I, uh, I wholeheartedly support and agree with that statement, Jerry. Um, it's really important. I see a difference from the time that I get these instruments uh, until after when I get them set up. They can, they can uh, definitely reveal the true characteristics of the horn better when they're set up correctly. And again, I want to just um, make sure that you all um, take note of the uh, the web address the link that lisa put up uh, to the supplemental videos the difference in some of those uh, students who played instruments uh, came in some of them had very dark they were dark players with a dark instrument like a bakun uh, which tends to be very dark and then um, a dark mouthpiece um, and when we put an instrument in their hands that had a bright sound. It was amazing what a difference it made. The students themselves could hear it and they were excited about it. So please go look at those videos when they get posted. I think it's uh, really uh, amazing what, what this can do. Wow, thank you guys so much. I think anybody that's ever purchased a clarinet can understand just how stressful it is to be put into a room with a whole bunch of instruments and try to hear difference in each, like the sound and quality 
and all the things that you have to look for, it's a stressful time and thinking about that um, from, from a different perspective and taking sort of the mystery out of that um, is really an interesting uh, science behind that. So I appreciate that. If you join the session late, um, we're going to be rendering it and uploading it to YouTube just shortly. I do encourage you to visit lisasclarinetshop.com and message them with any questions that you have about the instruments they sell and the system that, that she's developed. She also has some other things on her website that I highly recommend you check out. So please do. We're getting ready for our next session at 1230 with Michelle Anderson. So we will see you again in a few minutes. Thanks so much. Thanks, Don. Thank Thanks, you. Jerry. Thank, Thank you, Jessica. Jessica. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank Talk you. Bye-bye.